Alrighty, folks, it has begun. deck here. I got the paint. I got everything. And what I'm doing is I'm chipping off some of the thick paint that I had to go over here on the deck of the Jetty Wolf and scuffing it up because I'm going to paint from the console back. And since when we replaced the gas tank, there were some high spots on some welds so I'll show you what I'm talking about all right well you should be able to see that that's a spot where paints chipped because I painted over paint and then here's where we welded there's the weld right there I get the camera out of the way and I got some spots like that um, just some various spots I painted over paint because, um, you know, when we cut this deck out and I replaced my gas tank. over paint it eventually chipped off and it's been looking like absolute hell so I've got a lot of work ahead of me it is New Year's Day nobody wants to go fishing and it's about 80 degrees what a better time to do this right you can't paint this type of paint when it's really warm so I really can't do the actual paint job until it cools off saw a little bit of what I'm doing here. I am going from the console to the back of the boat, repainting the deck. The poor Jetty Wolf is a such a mess. And while I was grinding and this morning going to Harbor Freight to get some, some more uh, grinding wheels and flap discs and stuff like that, I had a woman call me. While I was just grinding in the boat, I had two calls and one left the message and they wanted to go right now or tomorrow. Because you know why? It's 80 degrees. It's 80 degrees, that's why. I'm not allowed to do anything. You know, I can't go nowhere. You can't do nothing because you're gonna lose business. But I don't care, I wanna get this done. It's been bothering me for a long time. Oh my God, it's filthy all the way up to the bow here. Coolers, everything. At least I covered my console. So I'm gonna get the pressure washer out and then I'm gonna pressure wash the entire inside of the boat. And then I'm going to let it dry and then after it dries I'm going to tape it off and I guess I'm going to be ready for paint well good morning YouTube it is day it's almost day three day two and a half I've got the deck done and then I started another little project ah, I don't know <laughs> you know <laughs> things just get to rolling but here's the deck you can see all those little other gray spots that's some self etching primer where it was basically kind of like 
bear on them or near, especially in that corner right there. Especially right there and right there. And then my next project, let's see if oh, I keep kicking the camera. My next project was this right here. You can see I had, uh, what do you call that, anti-skid tape up here because I used, I, I'd sit stuff up here and it would just slide off. So, let me get the light here right for you. So this is the top of my dash. There's my tray. Steering wheel is right here. And there's my Garmin. So I am also gonna paint this with the anti-skid gray paint. But I, I, oh my God, I had to get, oh, I had to get off this tape and it was a, it was like a damn 3M product. Damn, I keep kicking the camera. Um, so it had some unbelievable sticky stuff on it. It took damn near a half a, quart there of acetone to get it off so I'm going to roll that I think I'll do that first just to see how things go and I got some little tiny rollers like this and then I'm gonna have to start over here absolutely first work my way down And then work my way down and then work my way down because I got to get out over here and I remember rolling into that corner right there <laughs> the last time I did this hanging over the side of the, the back of the boat so that's the next piece of this puzzle all right here's the paint that I'm using Matson paints paint products it's made by this company called far west manufacturing all the way in washington of course that's where my boat comes from floor grip non-skid and walkway coating 222 light gray and then it says here uh, floor grip is a plastic coating with aggregate for steel, aluminum, masonry, which provides a safe non-slip coating. Surface prep. Get all the oil and all that existing that lacks good and corrosion and existing paint that lacks good adhesion. Here's the big deal that the guy told me about. Do not apply when surface temperatures are below 40 degrees. He said it's always perfect if it's, you know, 72-ish, 70 or whatever. Um, aluminum. Now, of course, I don't have any of this. But this is when the aluminum is brand new. Etch with Rhino Light 695 Chemical Cleaner Etcher. After dry, rinse with clear water. When thoroughly dry, apply 1030 or X4985 Etching Primer. Uh, dry to touch in one hour, time to recoat, eight hours. Fully dry, 16 hours at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 48 hours at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So, let's see what it is right now. It's almost perfect, to tell you the truth. Let's see. At the airport in Jacksonville, Florida, it is 62 degrees right now at 9.48 in the a.m. So, it should work. I've done it when it was 99 degrees underneath that steel carport with humidity of 2 million percent. So, uh, I'm getting ready here where you got to mix the living hell out of this stuff gotta mix it like crazy because it's got so much aggregate in it then for epoxies and stuff like that I picked up just some of this xylene thins epoxies and enamels well 
And that's what this is. I guess it's, it says it's a plastic coating, but it's like an epoxy paint. You know, having the high spots where the welds were when we did the tank, it's just going to be part of the animal. All right, so I'm all ready. Oh, here's the kind of um, here's the kind of roller that you end up using. It's like Velcro hooks, and it holds a whole bunch, or it's little loops. They call it a carpet roller because it's little nylon loops. And that's what makes, so you can see the gray on here. I mean, that stuff, that stuff is thick and it's on there from my last paint job. All right, well, there's uh, coat number one. God, it looks so much better. But, man, I'm telling you, you run, you run under the gun constantly. This was one gallon. I got about a quart left. And I had to, thank God, I had to uh, thin it out a little bit a couple times with the xylene. Because um, it's so thick. I mean, this paint is so thick. Um, I see a couple little spots I want to go over one more time. Um, and, of course, I got the top of the console all taped off and done also. So, there you go. So, um... Yeah, it's a it's a two gallon job, but you know I bought a gallon. It was like sixty eight bucks delivered. Uh, I guess it was yeah UPS. It was at least fifteen bucks. It had to come all the way across the country. Um, this is some good paint though. Good night, man. I mean, you saw in the beginning, me you know, buffing or grinding it, had to grind it off. And I mean, just handfuls of it. I mean, this is some bad to the bone stuff. So, um, I'm just worried, you know, I got these high spots. Let's see if you can tell here. Let's see if you can see that. See that line right there? Well, that runs right where under my feet when I stand behind the leaning post. So, um, what that is, that's a big old giant weld. And it's right under my feet. And of course those high spots is what the paint always gets rubbed off first. <sighs> I mean, I should just be thankful that I had two absolutely ungodly good guys come over and help me do this tank when we did it. Oh, I still have to wash all this off. I'm going to find dust everywhere for a while. Take a break from the job while you watch paint dry. <laughs> Thanks to Mike. Viewer of mine brought me over a whole case with two bags of Zaps Voodoo chips. I ate all the chips. Who else has a recliner in their garage? Put a comment below. Y'all have recliners in your garage? Well, this ain't a garage. This is the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp Shop, where it all takes place. Everything goes on. Alrighty, folks. Day three. This is definitely day three, if not more. Here's the dash. With the Annie Skid. 
And I'm gonna do the big reveal here. Pull out, this is the next job, is to pull all this out. I got a spot back here that got paint all over it. I'll have to get that off. And here we go. Ooh, yeah. Nice texture-y. I like it. All around the compass here. And then, of course, I have to put my Garmin back on. All right. Well, I can see I'm going to need two hands for this. So I'll finish up in a moment. tell by kneeling down on this it's about like it was when it came straight from the builder it's pretty rough that's just what I wanted because of the fact that it got actually kind of slick with like you know rubber boots on or something the the deck actually was getting kind of slickish not slick but you know what I mean all right, well that about wraps up this project. I'm very happy with it and I'm glad you could come by and check it out. Hey, I mean, it's not something maybe you're gonna do. I mean, how many people have aluminum boats? Big welded aluminum boats. Not many. You know, the Coast Guard, I don't know if I mentioned it, on those aluminum boats that they have, they have that 3M sticky tape uh, tread pattern usually in black and uh, it's really um, an abrasive material and I think they just do that out of pure simplicity that if those things start to curl up and you know lose their integrity I guess you could say they just rip them off clean it up and put another one down they get those actually pre-cut in a tread pattern per that boat. So the next time the Coasties pull you over, want to do one of those boardings, take a look see inside that boat or on the deck and you'll see it's not paint like me. It's not this beautiful gray paint like I have. It'll be more of a black tread pattern stick on 3M type thing. So if you learned anything out of this, uh, give it a thumbs up because that's what the YouTube algorithm wants. Chinese social credit score, remember. So give it a thumbs up if you could do me one little favor. You know, a lot of people don't understand that that means a lot to us, right? And I'm not a beggar. I don't beg people. I don't. I don't get into all that. You know, I see some YouTube guys, they do it 10 times in a video. But I always say, you know, if you just learned anything, if you were exposed to something new on my channel, give it a like. Next video. Well, I'm not going to say next video, but in the near future, Bubba Blade seven inch against Dexter Russell, seven inch. Be mighty interesting. You could really learn something then. Not many just people off the street that go fishing know anything about knives or knives steel, grinds, bevels, stuff like that. So you might learn something. So. Hit the subscribe so you can come on back. Uh, I got a lot more cleaning up to do here. And um, hopefully I'll be out, hopefully, I'm going to be out twice this week. So if anything goes on, I'll turn on the camera for you. How about that? Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.